morning, the second Sunday of July 2020. We bless the Lord for bringing us faithfully this far. My name is Irene Miner from PCE Goiwa in Thika West Parish. I'm born again this morning. Christ is Lord and Savior over my life. And I believe that he has faithfully brought you this far. I believe that you have continued to witness his goodness even as you continue to fellowship at home with your family. His presence, I want to believe that has been evident in your lives. And I invite you that we may read together the word of God from the book of Exodus chapter 15 from verse 22 to 27. And I read. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shah. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? But Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring you on, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. There they came to Elim, then they came to Elim, where, where there were 12 springs and seven, 70 palm trees, and they camped there near the water. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name and thank you for your goodness in our lives. We want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to hear your word this morning. How we pray? That your Holy Spirit may give each one of us an interpretation of God according to our needs and according to your will for the glory and honor of your name. This is our humble prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak on a theme entitled, When Life Hands You Bitterness and Disappointment. The passage that we have just read introduces us to us the first three days of the Israelites in the desert after crossing uh, the Red Sea. The Israelites had stayed in slavery for years. But our passage today happens at a time when they had been delivered from the slavery by crossing through the Red Sea on a dry land. That, at this point in time, was the greatest miracle of the Israelites' time. It was the greatest deliverance that they had witnessed. They had not only crossed the Red Sea on dry land, but they had also witnessed the Lord finish up their enemies in the same Red Sea. And having realized that the Lord had delivered them, and how he had acted in a very mighty way, they took time and sang a, a song of greatness. They sang a song of praise, glorifying God and declaring his mighty acts. They actually, at this point in time, affirmed their trust in God. Three days into the desert, however, they could not get water. And when they got, it was bitter. And they forgot all the other things that they had witnessed the Lord do, and they grumbled to Moses. They complained. And I will realize that our days today are so similar to the days of the Israelites. Today being the second Sunday of the second part, the second half of the year 2020, we remember how we were expectant at the beginning of this year. Because the Lord is not yet done with us. The Bible tells us in the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 25 following, that I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. Therefore, the time that we are considering wasted, as far as God is concerned, 
If we continue holding on to the faith that we confess, are not yet done, are not yet wasted. The Lord will repay us. People have made fun of the year 2020 that it should be removed from the calendar, that it only existed up to March. And from March, it was not an year, it was just COVID happening. And today, as our theme is going, when life hands you bitterness, when life hands you disappointment, what do you do? You expected a promotion, you got a sack instead. You expected prosperity in your business, you have had to close it instead. You expected stability in your marriage, you have had to separate instead. You expected to get a job, you are yet to graduate. When it is all disappointment around you, what do you do? We may not come up with an exhaustive list, but let us reflect on this passage and see at least four things that we can do. And number one is that we can cry out to God. We get this from verse 25, the part A of the verse 25. When the Israelites murmured, Moses knew what to do. He cried out to God. Now, crying out to God is an act of faith. Crying out to God shows dependency. It is like the way a child would cry out to a loving daddy. It shows dependency. It shows our inadequacy. It shows that we acknowledge the sovereignty of God. We acknowledge that although these things are happening in our lives, he may not necessarily have authored them, but he allowed them to come into our lives. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can happen in your life unless the Lord allows it. The Bible tells us in Psalms 145 and verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call him, to all who call him in truth. Moses did what the Israelites failed to do. He candidly called upon the name of the Lord. Brethren, let us be a people who call upon the Lord, just like Moses would. There's one thing that you realize Moses would always do when calling upon the Lord. He would call things as they were without really having to baptize them or sugarcoat them. If you are disappointed, go to God and tell him, I'm disappointed. This is not what I expected. And then after calling up to the Lord, the Bible says in Jeremiah verse, chapter 33 and verse 3, that call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. We have an assurance that all we need to do is call upon the name of the Lord. He will hear us and answer us in due time. The second thing that we need to do, guided by this passage, is throw the tree into your bitterness. Throw the tree into your disappointment. And this you get in verse, the second part of verse 25. A tree in the, in the Old Testament is a foreshadow of the cross. Now one beautiful thing that you see here is that God did not provide a tree. Instead, he made Moses see the tree. He showed Moses the tree. Other versions will call it wood, but I want to speak of a tree because that is what the original Hebrew Bible talks about. It calls it a tree. And our tree in this age is the cross. Now the cross has always been there. The cross is there. And the work of the cross is still active in our lives today. The cross is our place of the great exchange, where the Lord took our pain, where he took our suffering, where he took our shame, where he took our curses, he took our death that we may live, he took our disappointment that we may get fulfillment, the place of the great exchange. So what we need to do is to activate the power of the cross in our lives. And how do we activate the power of the cross in our lives? We need to believe that indeed all was done for us in Calvary. The moment you believe it, then you need to speak it, confess your faith, and hold on to it, as the Bible tells us in Hebrew. Hold on to faith, the faith that you confess. Because he who promised is faith, praise be the name of the Lord. So to activate the work of the cross, the power of the cross in our lives, and the power of the resurrection, 
We need to believe it, we need to confess it, and we need to live it. We live like people who are believing, who are, who, who are believing that it was paid, it was done for us at the cross. And what that does is that it gives us hope. It gives us hope. It activates the grace that the Lord has given us. We move from grace to grace. We move from glory to glory simply by activating the power of the cross in our disappointment, in our bitterness. Now, it doesn't necessarily make us immune to what is going on around us. But as I have said before, it helps us. It moves us from grace to grace. Because the Lord has given us sufficient grace to go through everything. Though we go through fire, it shall not burn us. And the third thing that we need to do is remember the mighty work of God in your past. Now, we always accuse each other that uh, we are people who forget very fast, and indeed we are. You cannot be surprised when, as a friend, you treat me so well today, and then tomorrow I behave like you've never done anything good to me. That's who we are. And that is who the Israelites were. Time and time again, they kept complaining. Why? Because every challenge that they encountered seemed to them like the worst ever. It blinded them. It made them forget the goodness of the Lord that they had witnessed before. This time you realize they had just done a prayer song. They had actually affirmed their trust in the Lord, but they forget. May we be a people who take time to recount our lives, and then you will realize that time and time again, the Lord has always done it for you. This is not the first time that you have a big challenge. The Lord has done it previously. And number four, and the last one, is continue in obedience. Regardless of what is happening, continue in obedience. Verse 26 tells us that if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. And as you continue, the Bible says that from here, they went to Elim. They came to Elim, where there were 12 springs and 70 plain trees, and there they camped. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, brethren, I want to encourage you that although times are difficult, and we are actually living at a time where our obedience is really at test. Just the other day, the COVID-19 containment measures were lifted. Not because it is safe, but because we have to balance life. We are expected as a people to continue with the containment measures at an individual level. Not now, that is a test on our ability to be obedient. Balancing the risk of infection and the struggles of life is not easy, but it is necessary for survival. Obedience is key. If we are to reach at a point where we are to, to, to benefit and to celebrate the goodness of the Lord as he repays our wasted years, then we have to continue in obedience. In their bitterness, in their bitter, in the, in the situation where they are thirst and all they could get is bitter water, the Lord issued a ruling for them. Listen and do what is right. May we be a people who will be able to do what is right even when it has been left on us to do it. When all life offers is bitterness and disappointment, when the foundations are shaken, when the foundations are destroyed, let us be a people who cry out to God. Let us be a people who activate the power of the cross in our lives. Let us call to mind the mighty acts of God in the past. And let us continue in obedience. And shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We glorify your holy name. How we pray, everlasting Father, that in our weaknesses, O oh God, your Holy Spirit, who is our helper, 
may come in handy and help us, O oh God. To you we look up to, O oh God, just like we would look up to our loving Father. We know that you will never fail us because that is your promise. So this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Now at this point, I want to invite the minister so that he may give us a word of benediction. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes human understanding be upon this congregation now and forevermore. Amen.